obviously we talk a lot about heat presses in general and the quality of the heat presses. Mm -hmm. And to add on to what Andy said, Ben and Bellflex are also the master distributor distributor say that word right for australia for hotronics and new zealand and new zealand yeah. sorry mm. sorry australia and new zealand um so when we talk about you know heat presses and the quality of heat press that's something that when you're starting out we always say that you really need to think about right because if mm -hmm. you buy cheap you tend to buy twice and hotronics presses aren't unaffordable um, but they are maybe a little bit more than what you would think of if you're going, oh, I'm going to start a business and you look on, I don't know, Amazon or something like that. Um, but there's a reason that we recommend the presses that we sell and everything that you can do and that they allow you to do. So I just wanted to talk a bit about that, really, about the importance of choosing a decent quality heat press from the off rather than wasting for 500 pounds or dollars before for six months and then going oh now i need to get a better one when you could have just done that initially yeah yeah so this like for me is a really important one and and i had some really good advice when i started out for my uncle which was buy good equipment and the reason for that is you want to buy something that removes stresses from your life not adds to it so a lot of people when they buy something like if they buy a heat press okay, we might be, let's buy a heat press. I don't want to spend too much on it. Um, and I, I buy something on eBay because it's going to allow me to print t shirt But what they've done is, yes, it sells them the idea of printing T-shirts, but it also comes with a lot of stress and anxiety as to whether it's consistent, whether it's reliable, whether it's going to decorate a garment that's not going to come back because of faulty application and, and things like that. And what they've done is, They've saved money on the initial purchase, but they've added so much stress and anxiety to the actual process. You know, nothing worse than getting a job or getting an order and running down to press it going, just please work this time. You know, like it's like the, the car that's got to drive you to work every day. And if you just can't trust that when you turn the key, it's going to start or get you there. Um, the, the stress also often isn't worth it. Business. If you really are starting out in business and you are going to build something that you're passionate about, you, you want to be putting your energies and efforts and the stresses should be around, okay, how am I going to get more orders? How am I going to print more? How am I going to market? How am I going to build a community around it? Not how am I going to make sure that this works, this machine that I've bought will work, right? So my advice from my uncle when I first started out was, was always buy the right piece of equipment first time. And and that advice I truly probably didn't fully understand or, or appreciate at the time. Um, and he was a mentor for me. And, and when I'd needed to buy equipment, we'd sort of go talking about what equipment and he'd just say, this one, you know, or, or this one or this one, you know, sort of thing. And my, th my very first heat press that I ever bought was $10,500. And that was 18 years ago. Wow. And that press I still have today. <laughs> yeah. um, and I had I had four others after it, and I've now still got two of them. And I'll admit I don't use them at the moment. They're they're still they're sitting on a shelf, and I, I don't want to sell them. But if I needed to plug them in and use them, they would work today, probably as they well as well as they did seventeen years ago. Um, and those presses have done not tens of thousands hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of applications um, and we had all the accessories and we had all of the bits and pieces and um, that was partially probably the success of our business when it started out because that's what we were we were a garment decorator very early on and that was some brilliant advice that I received and and you could never, you never had the stress. You know, we, we never thought about transfers not sticking. We never thought about things not washing properly. Like those stresses weren't anything we had in our business. We just looked to grow and we just looked to do more work. We just thought things always worked, you know. But it was because we had good equipment and, and what we bought, although very heavily, like a high price for the time, probably the best heat press I could possibly buy at the time, um, it never let us down not in all of those i think with a business as well there's so many other things that you have to worry about day to day that something as simple as making your product and having your product work shouldn't even be a question yeah absolutely i think that's this the same advice we give everyone here is 
one of the things that always surprise people when they come in for a demo or we meet them at a show and be like, yeah, you, you fuse it. I'm going to step aside, let you do it, put the t-shirt on, put the transfer on, free press, etc. And they're like, oh, that was easy. And mm. the, my follow-up and the honest advice is, well, shouldn't it, shouldn't it be? You know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to spend five minutes decorating a t-shirt because, you know, you don't add value to your business. You add value to your business by applying, but you don't add value to your business by finding workarounds for something that, where there's already a solution. You should be... If you're a business owner in particular, you know, you should think about, okay, how can I bring more business in? Is the most Absolutely. important thing you can do. So if you're distracted by, is this machine going to work today? Whose turn is it to kick it to make sure it heats up properly? <laughs> it's, uh, you know, have we got enough? Like I've seen some horror stories of people like trying to make their own bottom platens and putting out uh, one platen like, with metal, then a pillow, then a grip flex. And they tried to put a quick slip over the top of it to make it work. And you're thinking... How long did you, you probably spent like two days trying to figure that one out. So it's two days you've lost of your business already. That could be a thousand shirts yeah. right there, just n- nowhere. Um, just by trying to find a weapon. That Those shirts would have probably paid for that heat press that you spent two days trying to figure it out and trying to find some strange workaround that doesn't even exist anyway. 